When you were building your website, how much time and effort did you put into your about page? You know that little page that tells everyone just that little bit more about you? Or if you don't have an about page, think of it as your uh, Facebook profile or your Instagram profile or your LinkedIn profile. How much time and effort have you put into that? Well, today we're going to actually talk about the perfect, how to create the perfect about page for your website, but all the lessons can be used in all the other platforms that I've just mentioned. All right, so let's do this together. Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple or at least simpler. Join me, your host, Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Hey there, my podcast family. Welcome to episode 57 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you, as always, for lending me your ears today. I know you have lots of choices out there and I sincerely appreciate you making me one of them. If you're a first-time listener, then super, super welcome to you. I'm so happy to have you here with us today. I'm your host, Jen Donovan, and it's my job via this podcast and my social media and just about everywhere else that I live to make your business life simpler because business can be lonely, it can be hard, it can be complicated and it's rarely easy but it definitely should be simple or at least a little bit simpler. So that's my commitment to you on the so named Small Business Made Simple podcast. One way that I can actually help make your life a little bit simpler is if you come and join the Life Minded Business Owners Facebook group. Uh, the link is in the show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 57 or of course you can just go to Facebook and cycle and search like-minded business owners. So as I mentioned at the start, today is all about that about page on your website. It doesn't get much love and attention as I actually think it should, or I definitely know it should when people are building their websites. Your about page is one of the most important web pages for yourself, for your business, for your brand, for your expertise. Why? Because if you don't get your about page right, it's not going to help you build a strong brand or position yourself as the go-to expert in your industry. And that should always be the goals of anything you do online and offline. Build your brand, position yourself. It took me hours to write my about page. I did lots and lots of research. I actually looked at what other people in my industry had on their about pages. I looked at people outside my industry and what they actually had on their about pages. I looked at the people that I crush on. (laughs) at their about pages because I already think they're so wonderful. So what do their about pages look like? I looked at copywriters and people that I think are really great at reading, at writing copy. What did they have on their about page? And all the time I was researching, how can I come across as me on my about page? I wanted a visitor when they landed on my about me page on my website to feel like they've found a friend or even a soulmate. I wanted them to know me. I obviously wanted them to know what my expertise is, but I also wanted them to know what my business core values were and a little bit about me personally. I actually have an 80s style quiz or an 80s style questionnaire on my um, About Me page and it was all done just for fun. But one of the questions is, what was your most embarrassing moment? And I can tell you, hand on heart, I have hardly ever spoke about this to anyone. It is so embarrassing. As I get older and my wedding, which was 22 years ago now, um, gets further and further away, I do feel less embarrassed. But this is, this to me was my most embarrassing moment. But it's me. It's real. I'm putting it out there. And I'm guessing I'm not the only one who's done it. And if anyone is a fan of Friends and goes and reads about my embarrassing moment, you'll know what I'm on about, that I'm not the only one who could possibly have done this at their wedding. 
But like I said, I did put hours of creating writing about me on this page because I really wanted people to connect with me. And that's why I told some little stories like my most embarrassing moment. But there are so many people out there who just simply slap a few paragraphs together, make it all about them and call it an about me page. Because the funny thing is about the about me page is it really isn't about you at all. It's actually about your client, your customer, your prospect, and it's only a little bit about you. It's to show them who you are so they can perhaps get to know you and feel like they're connecting with another human and find similarities with themselves as well as you. You know, that whole H to H thing that I've been crowing about for ages, that human to human connection. So let's go over some elements that I think make up a really good about me page. So the first one is it needs to position your authority in your industry. Once people read about your about page, (laughs) that's so hard to say, once people read your about page, then they should know exactly what you do and who you do it for. Who is your who and what do you want to be famous for? These are the two questions you need to be consistently asking yourself when not only when you're planning your about me page, but in all your marketing. Who is your who and what do you want to be famous for? Writing this page isn't the easiest thing to master. I will give you that. But it is possible for you to understand the absolute essential elements which must be included, such as being able to position yourself in your industry. The second thing is ignore the myths. So there are lots of myths out there about what you should have on your About Me page. And the first one is you should only write about yourself. Like I said before, this is an about you page, but it's actually about your prospect or your customer or your client. It's not about you. It It's talking in your language, but it's actually doing it in a way that your prospect or your client or your customer will feel a connection to you. Personal stories are a great way of doing this, of connecting human to human Hence, my 80s style questionnaire that I've got on there. It's all done for a purpose. It's done to connect with other people, people that think like me, people who have values like me. So don't always think about your about page as writing only about yourself. The second myth is to use minimal design. And I kind of agree with this, but I kind of disagree with this. Ah, a fence sitter. So bear with me here. So for example, if you're a freelance writer or a copywriter and most of your target market is therefore going to be interested in your words, not so much your graphics or your design because what you want to be famous for is your beautiful words that connect with other humans. Of course, on the other hand, if you're a web developer or a graphics professional, then you're really going to have to make your About Me page attractive because that is what people are going to be looking for when they go to your page. So I guess my point is don't let these about page myths actually stop you from designing a page that's actually right for you and your target market. Focus on people's pain points and the solution that you can actually offer them. Because unlike your homepage, the about page should be directed at using your own personal stories, like I said before, but also your unique selling point. What makes you different to everybody else out there? Because if you can get your unique selling point or USP out to your clients or your prospects, then it's going to drive leads. You really want to make sure that your readers can actually relate to your page And learn something from it if they're going to take the time to read it as well. So on your about page, you should have a really effective headline. Every page on your website should have a headline and your about you page is absolutely no exception. Make it clear, make it simple and make it benefit driven. Make it eye catching. What's in it for them if they continue to read past the heading? Of course, you need supporting images. We all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. So no matter how attractive or well-written your page is, if there's nothing but 
text, then you're going to lose any potential customer. They just won't continue reading. We all know we need things broken up into little sections so we can read them really, really quickly. And images or supporting images is a way of doing this. Of course, you need to add images to your about page that shows who you are and also maybe what you offer. For instance, if you're a speaker, then maybe on your about page, you should have a picture of you speaking. Or if you sell products, then maybe you need to have on your about you page a photo with you and your products. Don't just have photos of of your logo or your business uh, premises or anything like make sure there is a human being in at least one photo on your about you page of course you can always up level it and do a short hi I'm Jen Donovan video or of course you wouldn't say Jen Donovan but you get my gist you can always up level it with a really short punchy well designed professional video I don't actually recommend that you do an unprofessional video here. I think in your About You page, you should actually have some professional design elements to any video that you might put up there. Of course, make sure if you're using images and videos that they don't slow your page down. Load speeds still count on your About You page because people want to read it and get off or they want it to load as quickly as possible because if it doesn't load quickly, bang, they're out of here, just like any other page that we have on our website. I mentioned a couple of times about storytelling because every successful about about you page is centered around the author's story. After all, a lot has really happened in your life probably before you got to the point you are now for your business that you have now. Just avoid excessive self-praise and please don't be boring. People just won't connect with boring and people don't want to know how good you think you are, but there's always testimonials, which I'll get to in a sec. Calls to action. This is probably somewhere where I see a lot of people fall down when it comes to their about pages. Where do you want to send people after they've read your about page? Do not leave it up to them to decide. Do not leave it to chance. Put a call to action in your page. I actually have heaps of them. There's like connect with me on Instagram. Come and join like-minded business owners group on Facebook. Hey, would you like one of my freebies? Or you can even send me a message all from my about me page. Calls to action are so important. So make sure you have at least one. Of course, colours and font all matter on the about page as well. It should always be in your brand colours and be clear and consistent with the rest of not only your branding, but the way you talk, the way you speak, um, the way you write. You know, I don't want to land on an about me page and think, wow, so clearly someone else has written the whole rest of the website because this sounds nothing like them. Be really, really clear on your tone throughout the whole of your website. Now, you don't have to call it an about page. You can get as creative as you like. You can have a get to know Jen page or a who is Jen page. Clearly, you would put your own name in there, but you can get really creative. You don't have to just call it an about page. But if you are going to get creative, make sure it's seriously obvious to the reader. Sometimes we get a little bit too creative and the message is actually lost to the person that we actually want to attract. So make sure that it's not too creative, that no one knows what will be there if they click it. Also have an understanding of the effect of your words. If you want your about page to build a connection with your target audience and influence their decision-making process, A really great way to do that is actually have the conversational tone, you know, invoking emotion with words that you actually choose to write. So it comes down to a little bit before when I was talking about, you know, making sure that your message is consistent and that the tone is consistent through the entire website. And having a conversational tone is very much a human to human interaction thing to do. So I 100% would love you to be using conversational language. So just to wrap this up, finally, make sure you put the most important bits first. Above the fold is still into play, even though it's an about page. So above the fold, you know, if you think of 
what would it look like on a mobile phone or what would it look like on a computer without someone scrolling? You want the message that you want to get across to be above the fold. As I said, my About Me page took lots and lots of research, lots of time and lots of energy and it's not perfect. It's far from it, but I think it is a perfect representation of me. I think if you read my About Me page, you'll see that the person you get online and the person you get offline and the person you meet in the supermarket or the person you'd speak to on the phone is all the same person. I think my About Me page may not be perfect, but it's definitely authentically me. And that's what my goal was all along. So let me just tell you, even though it's perhaps not perfect and I could certainly do with some improvement, let's have a look at the structure of how I structured my About Me page just to give you a bit of an idea. So here's how my page is actually structured. I've got an introduction to me, my past, and that talks about my past until now and a little bit of why I do what I do. And then I have my brands showing my expertise, or sorry, then I have my brands that I've worked with showing my expertise. Next, I have things that I know for sure. Again, sharing some of my experiences, my thoughts, my ideas around business. And then I have my business core values because I really believe that people will do business with other people whose values match their own. So it's really important to me that I put out my core values on my About Me page. Then I have a bit of why me, why am I different, why when there's a social media and marketing person probably for every corner of every street in Australia, why I'm a little bit different, why you would choose to work with me. And then of course I've got testimonials, so what other people say about me because I don't want to self-promote but I'm more than happy to have some testimonials on there of other people saying about their experiences of working with me. Then I have my 80s style quiz, which really is just letting the reader get to know me a little bit more personally, including my embarrassing story. Um, And then it kind of goes into what to do now. So these are my calls to actions. You know, join this, listen here, um, listen to my podcast, download my latest freebies because who doesn't like a freebie or two? And then as we get to the bottom, there's a form to get in touch with me where people can leave their details and a message. And then, of course, I have my Instagram live feed just for good measure and a little bit more of a call to action to follow me on Instagram without actually saying follow me on Instagram. So let's take some action. What does your About You page look like on your website? Perhaps it needs some work. Perhaps the messaging isn't clear or perhaps it leaves the reader not sure who you are or what you do or how you can actually help them. Or maybe it's all about you and there's absolutely no value in it for the reader whatsoever. Or maybe it's not about you at all. The reader can read it and still have no idea who you are as a human being perhaps know about your brand but have absolutely no idea who who the human is behind this brand and behind this business that they've just taken the time to read about. Okay, so now if you've listened to all this and you're thinking to yourself, I don't have an about page on my website or maybe you don't have a website at all, then all these points, like I said at the beginning, are super relevant for Facebook business pages, your Instagram profile, your LinkedIn profile, etc, etc. But You can actually make an About You page without a website. It was one of my discoveries of the week in episode. I can't remember. I should have looked it up before I pressed record. But anyway, regardless, there is a website called uh, about.me. So www.about.me. And you can actually make your own free page all about you through that website. And once you've made it up, you can put it at the bottom of your emails or link to it in your social accounts, really anywhere that you can think. I would like people to know more about me, but I don't have a website and there's limited characters here that I, you know, I just can't get in everything that I want to write. So perhaps have a think about doing an about me page at about.me. But that is all for episode 57. I hope that you have enjoyed this all about 
the about page. I don't think I've ever said about so much in my entire life and neither shall I in the future. I, of course, will be back next Thursday with more marketing know-how and another great episode to help you simplify your business in 2020. If you're enjoying the podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode and perhaps share this with a friend. Or if you're listening and you're on Instagram, then maybe take a screenshot of you listening and put it up on your stories and tag Small Business Made Simple. I would love to see that in your Instagram. Of course, if you're still in the gift giving mode as we head out of January, I'd love a rating or a review. Those things are like gold to podcasters like me. And seriously, they would just world mean the world to me. I will, of course, see you next week for episode 58. But in the meantime, let's connect and let's get social on social. I'm on most of the platforms and you will find me wherever you go. So maybe make that a job that you do today after you've had a look at your About Me page. But as usual, remember my small business peeps, as my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No point in dreaming small.